Hi everybody, today I want to talk about the topic that most of you will have come across or will come across when you get more involved with nature and bird photography. I'm talking about teleconverters. You grab one of these, like this 2 times extender, put it between your lens and your camera and you can double your focal length. Sounds pretty amazing. Why wouldn't everybody be doing it? Well, sometimes if things sound too good to be true, they are. So let me look into teleconverters today and let me show you exactly when to use them and when it's better not to use them. So let me start by saying that if I had the choice to shoot with an extender or without an extender, I would always opt to shoot without an extender. Simply because the autofocus will be better, I have more f-stops available to me and the image quality generally without an extender is better than with an extender. So why use extenders? Mainly because as you know with bird photography it's very difficult to get the birds large enough in the frame. So having the ability to increase your focal length by 1.4 or 2 times is very appealing and that's also the reason why I'm using these extenders a fair amount when I'm out in the field because they give me more flexibility and give me greater chances of getting the images that I want. So how does using an extender in the field affect your photography? As I already mentioned, using an extender takes one or two stops of light away from your camera. So your f4 wide open lens becomes a 5.6 or f8 wide open lens. And then for maximum image quality, you need to stop down at least one more stop. So that means with extenders, you generally have to use higher ISO simply because you still want to maintain a decent shutter speed. And because you're now increasing your focal length, you actually want to have higher shutter speeds when using an extender as compared to using no extender. So if you're having an f4 300mm lens and you can get away with shooting at a 250th of a second, with the 1.4 extender you probably want a 400th of a second and with the 2 times extender you might want like an 800th of a second just to be safe that none of your images have too much blur in them. Because more focal length also means more potential for blurry images because your camera might shake. So this is something to keep in mind that when you're using extenders you have to stop down more, increase your ISO and increase your shutter speed. That can become challenging especially if you're working in dark conditions because as you know if you had f11 for instance in a dark environment your ISO might have to go to 3200, 6400 to even get a half decent amount of shutter speed. So this is something to keep in mind and this is definitely a big limitation of using the extenders. Another limitation is that depending on your camera it might not be able to focus with all autofocus fields or some of the older DSLR cameras can't focus at all with the two times extender for instance or they just have the middle autofocus and field available to them. With the newer mirrorless cameras this is not really a problem anymore but it's just something to be aware of. What also happens when you're using an extender is that your depth of field becomes more shallow. Your background becomes much more blurry which is a nice effect but your depth of field becomes much more shallow. So if you're really close to a small bird and you're focusing on the head for instance it's quite common that the feet are already out of focus which personally I don't really like. So this is another reason why I would always recommend to stop down one or two stops when using an extender to kind of outweigh that negative effect of having narrower depth of field. So by increasing your f-stop you're actually then getting a bit more depth of field and a bit more areas of the bird in focus. One big mistake I see people make and the main reason why a lot of people talk badly about extenders is because they use extenders when the bird or their subject is too far away already. I usually use extenders when I want to get like a closer up shot of a bird that's already close to me. In these cases the image quality will still be really nice but if there's a crane on a field that's already 50 or 100 meters away from me if I put the two times extender on yeah it might be now this big in my frame but I wouldn't expect the greatest image quality simply because the bird is so far away from me and there's so much air between me and the bird. This brings me to another point. I also made a video about five tips for taking razor sharp images and one of the points that I'm talking about in that video is heat haze. And heat haze becomes very apparent when using extenders for birds that are a large distance away from you. For instance a bit later in the morning the air between you and the bird kind of isn't crisp and clear just having these 
heat waves coming up and it severely affects image quality and just won't allow you to take great images. So keep that in mind. In a lot of internet forums you can always read that it's much better to not use extenders and then simply crop your images. Is that really true? Well it's not my personal experience but let's not just go by experience or people talking. Let's just look at some sample images that I've taken with my 600mm lens and the two extenders and then an f2.8 70 to 200 millimeter lens and I took images without the extender and then with the extenders and then at the end I cropped the image without the extenders to the size of the image with the extenders so we can compare what gives us the better image quality. So here's the first set of images now this is the 600 millimeter lens wide open at f4 and we can zoom in to 100% the image quality with the 600 millimeter lens just by itself is really good so what happens if we're putting on an extender so here's the image now at f5.6 wide open with the 1.4 extended if we zoom in so you can see the image quality has slightly suffered but overall on this prime lens the image quality is very good still in my opinion let's see what it looks like if we stop down to f8 and as we can see, the image quality has slightly improved. Now, I really hope you can see those small differences on your screen on YouTube, but otherwise you just have to take my word for it. F5.6 with the 1.4 extender on the 600 millimeter lens is already good, but F8, it's just slightly better and you have a little bit more depth of field. So now let's look at the two times extender. So now this is the 600 millimeter lens with the two times extender wide open at F8. And if we zoom in now, we can see the image quality is still all right, but it's not quite as crisp anymore as you saw with the no extender or the 1.4 extender. So this is wide open. Let's see what happens if we stop down one stop to F11. And as you can see, much better image quality overall now, almost on par with the 1.4 extender. But what about zoom lenses? Typically, without even looking at my examples, I would say that you have to be very careful when using an extender on a zoom lens, especially if it's a lens like 150 to 600 that's wide open at like f6.3 on the long end. I would say most of these lenses can't really handle an extender very well. So that's why I picked a zoom lens today that is a very good lens, has great image quality, f2.8, 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I just wanted to show you how that lens performs with the extenders now. This is the lens without an extender at f4, f5.6 and f8. And surprisingly to me it actually even made a difference on the lens without an extender to stop down slightly from f2.8 to f4 or 5.6 actually already gave me a slight increase in image quality which is not unexpected on a zoom lens I suppose because with all zoom lenses Usually if you stop down you get slightly better image quality. So let's have a look what happens when we put a 1.4 extender on this lens. So now we're wide open at 70 to 200 millimeter with a 1.4 extender gives me f4 280 millimeters and if we zoom into this we can see the image quality is just really poor. So this is the main reason why I say don't use extenders on zoom lenses, at least not if you're not stopping down. So let's see what happens if we are stopping down. So this is f4 wide open with the extender. Now we're going to f5.6 280 millimeters and that's already much better as you can see the image quality is coming back to us a little bit. But let's go down one more stop to f8. All right, and now finally f8 we get to a point where I say I would be fairly happy with the image quality. So I actually had to stop down two full stops on the 70 to 200 millimeter lens to get an acceptable image quality result with the 1.4 extender. So I would not recommend to use a two times extender on any sort of zoom lens, but just for the sake of it, I also went ahead and put this two times extender on this 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So this is wide open now at f5.6 and 400 millimeters. And if we zoom into this, you can see it's just kind of a mess. There's no details visible. So let's see what happens if we stop down from here. So this is one stop down to f8 
Let's go two stops down to F11. And again, now we're slightly starting to get some better image quality. And then I went three stops down to F16. And you can see only then really we get a decent amount of detail back into the bird. So with two times extend on this lens, now you can actually still get okay results, but you have to stop down almost three stops from wide open to get to those acceptable results. And in that case, it's probably not really practical in the field anymore to use like F13 or F16 on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So extenders are very nice for using on big prime lenses, but when it comes to the zoom lenses, I think a lot of the negative effects probably outweigh the gain that you get in your focal length. So because a lot of people say it would be better to crop than using extenders, I thought let's do that as well. I think you can already guess the answer for the 600 millimeter prime lens. I can just show you the examples now. So here's the 840 millimeter shot with the 1.4 extender uncropped. And then here you're having the 600 millimeter frame cropped to the size of the 1.4 extender. Personally, I feel like that the image quality with the extender is good enough or better to justify using the extender. Also considering that this file now that's not cropped is much bigger. So if I wanted to do a big print, it would definitely be better using the 1.4 extender than using a no extender and cropping the file. And when it comes to the two times extender, you can see that there might be the tiniest bit more detail visible with the cropped image that you can see here against the image full frame with the two tank extender. But at the same time, if you're looking at that cropped image, you can also see the pixel a bit more. The image quality isn't quite there anymore. And now you have to consider that the file with the two times extender is double the size of the file that I had to crop to match frame fillingness of the two times extender. So in my opinion, on a prime lens, using the extenders and stopping down a little bit is a no-brainer. The image quality is still there and you get much better results because your images will be much bigger in the end. When it comes to the zoom lens and using extenders, the examples are not as clear anymore because the cropped image with no extender has better detail than the image with the extender wide open. Only once you stop down two or three stops, the image quality kind of becomes more similar. So if you're able to stop down two or three stops, I think you can still use the extender and maybe get bigger files. But overall, on a zoom lens, it seems that cropping, in most cases, will likely give you better image quality overall than using an extender on a zoom lens. This might be a little bit of a disappointment for some of you who have been hoping that they could just use an extender on like a 100 to 300 millimeter lens, but this is really not what extenders are made for. A lot of people often ask me why I use a heavy f4 600 millimeter lens instead of like a 5.6 lens for instance. And one of the main reasons is that I can use extenders very well on an f4 big prime lens. And that's something that I just can't get with a lot of other lenses. For instance, if you're starting with a 5.6 wide open lens, the problem is that if once you're using a two times extender, you're already at F11, then you need to stop down one more stop and you're like at F13, 14, 16. And it just becomes very difficult to use those F stops in the field. So for me, having an F4 lens, is just a good compromise because I can use it without the extenders, with the 1.4 extender, and the two tanks extender and get great image quality. So how would I use extenders? I would only use them on big prime lenses, F4 prime lenses ideally. You have to stop down at least one stop for maximum image quality and a little bit more depth of field. And you want to make sure that you're using them on subjects that are not already too far away from you. Because if you're using them on subjects that are just very, very far away from you, there's too many things like heat, haze that interfere with the image quality and you won't be quite happy with the files. But if you're sticking to my recommendations, you will get amazing images with the extenders. What are your experiences with extenders? Are you using them now? Are you using them on the prime lens or a zoom lens? Are you happy with them? Let me know in the comments. As you've seen from this video, I think on a prime lens, it's definitely worth investing into the extenders to have more flexibility and reach, whereas on most zoom lenses, I would probably vote against it and prefer cropping 
over using an extender because the image quality, unless you're stopping down two or three stops, is just not there. So let me know in your comments your experiences with extenders and also make sure to check out my videos down there in the description, for instance, where I take you with me in the field, show you how I use extenders and how I track birds to my purchase, my ebook, how to attract amazing birds, where I show you exactly how I get the birds to land on my purchase. And of course, also my masterclass on image editing, where I show you exactly how to make your images look absolutely amazing. I'm also currently working on introducing one-on-one -on -one mentorships where you will be able to jump with me on a Skype call or Zoom call and we can work on your images, review your portfolio, set up your camera, whatever you want. That's coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. And if you're on my email list, you will be the first to know about that. Other than that, as I said, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you very soon. Bye.